we're going to derive the equation for the magnetic field of a general solenoid and then apply that to a solenoid that's longer than its size and then get the limiting cases. We're going to use a result that we have derived before, the magnetic field of a single coil of wire, I, a distance x away and a radius r of the coil is r. So this is r, r and the distance is x. So let's generalize that to a solenoid. So if we have a solenoid like this, well, let's say the solenoid is pretty big, like in this sense, like that, like that, like that, like that, like that, like that. So a solenoid is pretty much any current carrying wire that has a certain length and a certain radius. So the, uh, we'll call this one zero, zero. We'll put the x and y axis here. And we want to find the, the B field some distance here. We want to find the B field some distance here, uh, a distance D away from the front edge. Okay? So derive the general expression. So uh, what's going to happen? Well, I have different elements here. So the current, I'm going to do like this. The current I'm going to define as di, so each of these will create a certain db over here, db, and then so I'll change this to db and then I'll change this to di. Each of them consider it part of the current of the whole wire, okay? And di is going to equal lambda dx, where lambda is the linear current density. Think of it as the current density of the whole thing. Okay, so we have here uh, mu zero r squared over two r squared plus, and then x is going to be what? X is the distance of, my, of a certain element from that point. Okay, because x was the distance from a certain coil to that point. So if the distance from here to here, since I put my origin on the left side, if that distance is x, then the x in the equation is going to be the distance here. So if the distance from here to here is L, the length of the solenoid, this is the radius of the solenoid, okay? So what would be the distance from this point to that point here, okay? Well, from the origin to that point is D plus L, right? So from here, to here is D plus L, because D is the distance from the front edge, okay? And then if I do D plus L minus X, that gives me the distance from a certain element of the solenoid to the point of my desire. So D plus L is this whole distance minus the distance from here to that X, that's X. That would be my X in the integral, okay? So we have here, uh, go like this, uh, d plus l minus x squared to the 3 halves, and then you have lambda dx. And then I'm going to integrate this. So b is going to equal, and then whatever is a constant I can pull out, mu 0 lambda over 2 integral, r squared is also constant. Mu zero r squared lambda over two dx divided by r squared plus d plus l minus x squared to the three halves zero to l. So okay, so basically you're integrating this thing. Everything came out from zero to l, and I could do some u substitution here. This is a uh, not too complex of an integral. Okay. So let u equal d plus l minus x. du is going to equal negative dx. So the integral d mu 0 lambda r squared over 2. And the limits of the integral would change. When x equals 0, u is equal to d plus l. And when x equals to l, then L and L cancel, U is equal to what? D. 
and then dx is equal to negative uh, du over r squared plus u squared to the 3 halves. And of course, I can take the negative and change the, the order of the integral. So now I have d plus l and then d. Okay. This is a typical integral of the format of um, the integral of this is going to be uh, u divided by r squared so it's going to be u divided by r squared times r squared plus u squared to the one half power okay so it's a typical integral that occurs in uh, physics 3 electricity and magnetism type uh, integrals and we've seen it before when we did uh, electric field of a rod the, this uh, integral of three halves thing so it does occur quite often and then now we evaluate this from d to d plus l okay r squared cancels this r squared and b equals mu zero lambda over two and then I have d plus L over R squared plus d plus L squared to the one half minus, then you put d over R squared plus d squared to the one half. Okay? Now, what's lambda? Lambda is the total current of the wire divided by the length of the wire, right? So, lambda is the total current, which is Ni over L. N is the number of loops of the wire, right? How many loops there are, times the current in each particular loop, in the individual loop, divided by L. So, you have here Ni over L. So let's find the limiting case. So this is the magnetic field of a general solenoid. The distance d away from one edge, the length of the solenoid and the radius of the solenoid for any length and any radius and any number of terms. Okay? Now what do we know from Ampere's law? We know that if a solenoid is, can be considered to be a long solenoid, and you can see uh, my videos on Ampere's law and the uh, derivation of the magnetic field of, uh, inside the solenoid, you're going to see that the magnetic field is inside a solenoid should come out to be uniform, can be expected to be uniform, and equal to mu zero little n i, where little n is the number of turns per unit length. So it can be written as mu zero n i over L. That's an approximate value that works when the length of the solenoid is much longer than its diameter. So that's when the L is much, much bigger than the radius of the solenoid. Okay? So let's see if this result gives us the same as that. When L is much, much bigger than R, what happens? And also, the other thing we have to put is we have to put D is equal to uh, negative L over 2. Right? Remember, in our derivation, we had like this, and we put the xy axis here, and then d was here. So if I'm in the middle of the solenoid, what's my d? If I'm in the, right in the middle, the d is going to be negative l over 2, right? It's going to be on this side. d equals negative l over 2, half the length of the solenoid. So if I put negative L over 2, negative L over 2, negative L over 2, negative L over 2, that gives me a general magnetic field right at the midpoint of the solenoid. Okay? What does that come out? L over 2 plus L over 2 is L over 2. Negative L over 2 plus L over 2 is uh, L, uh, it'll be negative L over 2 plus L, uh, L, it'll be L over 2 squared, so L squared over 4 to the one half minus, and then if we put d is negative l over two, I'll get negative l over two, or same thing here. So 
So I end up adding them, right? So you end up getting what? Over two uh, over two L. <coughs> okay, so you end up getting a uh, magnetic field is mu zero n i over two L, and then you double this, so you end up getting L over r squared plus l squared over 4 to the 1 half power and then the l and the l cancel so this is the mag general magnetic field of the uh, the magnetic field right in the middle of the solenoid